Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to the channel. Um, hope the Lord is blessing you all, opening your eyes and answering your prayers um, to his will. Now, in this video, I want to talk about what's going on in Australia. Now, it's no secret, um, unless you've been living under a rock, that Australia is literally under fire. Um, I just heard a news story today that said there has been a report of at least 20 people who have been killed and an estimate of half a billion animals. And I, when I heard that, I was, I was in shock. I was like, wow, that is like a lot of animals. And it's sad because I like animals. You know, I think animals are great. I really do. And I'm like, why does this have to happen to innocent animals? So I'm 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 watching the news this evening, and you know, of course, there's the news about Iran and the potential strikes in which they're going to attempt to do on the USA. Uh, 32 targets, as they say, and America has about 52 uh, Iranian targets that they have in their sights if Iran decides that they want to, you know, play that game. And the news of Australia comes up. So at that moment, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my wife and I'm like, what is going on? in Australia that would cause such a horrible, horrible event to occur? Like what is really going on over there? What did, and one of the first questions that I asked myself was, what, what did they do? What have they done to, to have to endure this? What have they done? So I, I did a little research and I came across something like an a very, very interesting article that I'm going to read to you all um, in a minute. But before I go to that article, you know, I'm, you know, got my Bible right here. But for time's sake, so I don't have to flip pages, um, I'm going to read it off the phone here. OK, um, I'm going to read a couple out of a couple of different books, but you can go read, um, read them for yourself. Meditate on them. Let the Lord speak to you. And these are regarding judgment, the judgment of God. They are regarding punishment, okay? Now, I understand that this video may not get a lot of likes. There's going to be some angry people who come on here, and that's fine. That's okay. I understand that truth is not necessarily welcomed in this world. Because if it was welcomed, Jesus would have never been crucified, okay? So I'm going to read out of Ezekiel 7, verse 3. Ezekiel 7, 3. And it says, Now the end has come upon you, and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will repay you for your abominations okay we live in society to where we feel like we can do anything that we want with no consequences with no repercussions with no response from God like he's just gonna turn a blind eye to what it is we do. And that's just simply not the case. A lot of problems that we have in this country, a lot of problems that are that other countries are experiencing right now have a lot to do with sin. They have a lot to do with sin. God is not just doing things just for the heck of it, just so he can laugh or or, or just get a, a kick out of seeing us suffer or seeing us in pain. That's not God. That's not God at all. But who God is, 
is he is a judge, a righteous judge at that, who hates sin. Because let's remember, sin is what separates us from the Lord. Sin separates us from the Lord. And along with sin comes condemnation. And I am a firm believer in God punishing people and even nations for certain sins that they are involved with. Okay, so I'm going to read another book out of the book of Jude. Now, just imagine how long this would take if I would have had to turn to it. We're going to read Jude 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it says, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example suffering and vengeance of eternal fire. Okay, eternal fire. Okay, listen. You know, the Lord has promised us that he will never punish the world again with a flood or with water. But it has been said time and time again, especially in the book of Revelation, that the next time that this world is going to be judged, it's going to be by fire. Now, I don't know where you live, but I know where I live here in Florida. It seems to be getting hotter and hotter every single year. You know, I feel like that hedge of protection from the heat seems to be becoming weaker and weaker. I mean, we have brush fires in California, like California really, really takes a hit when it comes to these fires. Now, California is actually one of the most wickedest, if not the most wickedest state in America. A lot of people like to call it Hollywood, land of the lefties. And you can almost bet that that entire state hates God. You can say all you want that they love God or you love God. But let me tell you something. Those brush fires and those wildfires and things that are occurring over there are not by chance. They're not by chance. The Lord still punishes sin. And we... We think that we can just be disobedient children or disobedient people and, and not feel the punishment of God the Father. It's just not, it, it makes no sense. I mean, when criminals commit crimes, we want to see them arrested. We want to see justice brought to fruition. We want to see them locked up. We want to see them punished. For their crimes punished for the things that they have done the harm that they have caused other people how do you think the lord feels about sin for the book of romans tells us that the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death and that means that we pay for it with our lives you cannot just dwell in sin, swim in it, and enjoy it and love it without repercussions and punishment. It's just like a person who fornicates. And if you don't know what that means, I understand it's an archaic word. It just means having sex outside of marriage. If you continuously do it over and over and over and over with different guys, with different women and, and, and homosexuals out there passing each other around, and then all of a sudden you get... HIV, full-blown AIDS, herpes, all of these STDs, which I personally believe are punishment for the sin of fornication and adultery. That's why we have them. 
you were doing what you were supposed to do, you wouldn't endure such such punishment. Let's just call it like it is. Okay, so I'm reading an article from the daily from, uh, from the news daily, and this article was posted November the seventeenth of last year. Okay, and it reads the title: "Button Up." Alex Jones lays into Israel Foley for saying brush fires are God's punishment. Now, I have no idea who Israel Foley is. Maybe some of you people can educate me on that. But I looked this article up because I was curious to see if this was prophetic as far as what's happening to Australia. Is this really God's punishment? So I came across this really, really interesting article. Um, and apparently this guy is a preacher or potentially a pastor who made some remarks saying that Australia is being punished by these brush fires. And of course, the news media just slaughtered him like they always do. Anytime a man of God says anything that's against society's narrative. Anytime a man of God says anything that condemns sin or that preaches truth, he is always the one who's the bad guy. And it is what it is. But I personally would much rather be considered a bad guy in the eyes of man and a good and faithful servant in the eyes of the Lord. So I'm going to read the article, and it says, Sacked Walby, um, Israel Foley has drawn widespread, com widespread condemnation for his weekend sermon claiming the NSW and Queensland's fires are God's way of punishing Australia for approving same-sex marriage and giving women access to safe and legal abortion. Now, I don't even have to go any further. I really don't. Because here is your reason right here as to why Australia is going through what they're going through. Okay? They've approved same-sex marriage, which is, which is an abomination. It's not considered marriage in the eyes of God. Marriage is between a man and a woman, just like the Lord intended it to be, because a man and a woman procreate to create another human being, which is something a man and a man cannot do and something a woman and another woman cannot do. Yes, that may make you upset, but to be honest with you, I don't care because the name of this channel is Biblical truth central and the bible says that a man shall leave his wife his leave his parents to cleave to his wife so that they may become one flesh okay and the article goes on to say that you know the prime minister um blasts him for all of his his remarks against what he said because it was a sermon i tried to find the sermon but i couldn't i couldn't find it and I'll just continue reading. It says, Prime Minister Scott Morrison blasts Israel appalling, insensitive comments. Of course, they would, they would parenthesize appalling, insensitive. Um, all he was doing was preaching the Bible and what have you. Comments while opposing leader Anthony Abyss called um, the Sack Wallace star repulsive. Ooh. Foley made the claims to the followers at his fringe, uh, fringe Christian church in a sermon also aired online. He claims it was made out of love, quote, out of love. And what's what is the big deal about quoting out of love? It is the truth. If we as believers in Christ don't tell the truth, we sugarcoat it all the time, make you think that your sin is okay and that the Lord is just going to look the other way. How in the world could you possibly say that that's real love? To tell somebody that they're wrong, to tell somebody about themselves is love. 
But the problem is that love has been corroded. It has been perverted by this world and they don't recognize what true love is. The gospel of Jesus Christ is true love. Rebuking a brother or a sister or somebody that's lost is true love because ultimately we're trying to keep people out of hell. Do you not understand that eternity is forever? Eternity does not end. When you're in hell, it's forever fire and brimstone and torment and torture. And then you go to the lake of fire where you burn forever and ever and ever. Does that sound like a horrible thing? It sounds like the most horrible thing uh, to the human imagination. And personally, my mind just can't conjure it up. Okay. Uh, and this is Israel talking, the pastor. He quotes, I've been looking around at the events that have been happening in Australia this past couple of weeks with all the natural disasters, the brush fires, and the droughts. He quotes, um, and it goes, also, it goes on to say, he says in the clip um, at the Truth of Jesus Christ Church, Sydney Facebook page, and Israel again quotes saying, look how rapid the brush fires, um, so I'm sorry, look how rapid these brush fires, these droughts, all these things have come in such a short time period. Do you think it's a coincidence or not? So he goes on to say, God is punishing Australia for the same sex marriage laws and for the easy access to have an abortion. And the reaction to that is these brush fires and these droughts. And he's saying it's not a coincidence that we're undergoing, uh, that Australia is undergoing what they're undergoing. He goes on to say, God is speaking to you guys, Australia. You need to repent and these laws and turn it back to what is right. And he added, the tragic events were just a taste of God's judgment. Now, mind you, this article, and I'll put it in the description, was posted November the 17th of 2019. And the last thing he said on here was this is only a taste of God's judgment. Now, we look today, fast forward here in January, and it is out of control. I don't think Australia has ever experienced such a thing, you know, in, you know, ever, to be honest with you. And it does make you feel bad. It really does, because there's a lot of um, animals who are, who are dying. There are people who are dying. You know, you never want to hear about people dying. You never want to hear about animals dying. But the fact of the matter is that sin comes with a price. Sin comes with a price. Like I said, the wages of sin is death. It really is. We, again, live in this world to where people think they can just do whatever they want to do with no consequences, man. And, and it's sad that it has to come to this. It's sad that people have rebelled against God so much that they've turned, they get turned their backs on them and decided that they want to do what they want to do and they don't want to follow the Lord and they want to reject Christ, but they also want to live in peace. They also want to live with no, with no consequences. They want to live in harmony when that's just not possible. You see, without Jesus Christ, there is no peace. There is no harmony. There is no rest for the wicked. As the Bible says, the wicked get no rest. The wicked only get torment. The wicked only get punishment. The wicked only sees the dark side of life. You know, I really do hope that this event makes people think, especially the people in Australia. You know, I was watching a video the other day and this person was like, you know, there's a lot of people over there that are rethinking things. They're thinking about their lives. They're thinking about their future. They're thinking about whether or not this actually is not a coincidence. So there are actually some people in Australia who are waking up right now. And that's just the thing about God. God has no problem 
with going to extreme measures to wake people up because I don't think people understand the severity of hell, folks. It does not end. It doesn't end. It never ends. You don't go to hell for five years and then get out and you're free. You don't go to hell for 50 years and then get out and you're free. You don't go to hell for 200 years and get out and you're free. You don't get out. You don't get out, folks. Do you love your sin so much that you would be willing to seal your fate? Do you love your sin so much that you would be willing to sign your life over to death? Do you love your sin so much that you would be willing to forsake heaven, life with Jesus Christ and God the Father? Do you really love your sin that much? Do, do things really need to be your way that bad? Do you hate God that much that you would much rather serve the enemy who hates you? <sighs> Everyday people play Russian roulette with their life. Because we don't know when that bullet is going to be in the chamber. We don't know. We just know that there's a bullet there, meaning there's a possibility that I might die one of these days. And that possibility is very, very strong. Because nobody anticipates getting up in the morning, getting ready for work. And then dying on the way to work or dying on the way home or dying going to get lunch. Nobody anticipates that type of stuff. But it happens every single day. We pass by horrible car accidents. And we see the leftovers of the car. The ambulance is gone, long gone, but the car is still there. We don't know if the person made it or not. A lot of people die on the way to the hospital. A lot of people die once they or in the hospital after a couple of days, some people die uh, upon impact. But none of these people think that they're going to pass away. I think that, you know, if it, 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 you know, if you if you are watching this video, if you made it to the end, which I hope you have, I want you to really sincerely think hard about life. I want you to think about eternity. I want you to think about where you believe that you're going right now. Like if I asked you the question, you know, are you going to heaven or hell? And you based it on your own narrative as far as what you need to do to go to heaven, meaning the mass majority of people think it's by um, being a good person when that's not even the half of it. Like, really, have you thought about it? Because if you haven't thought about it, then you need to think about it now, not tomorrow, but right this second. You need to think about it because you could die in your sleep. I mean, anything could happen. A missile could hit your house when you are asleep. A plane could crash into your house. Trust me, I know it sounds far-fetched, but it happens. Freak accidents happen all the time, and somebody's life is claimed. You need to be thinking about all of that and just ask yourself, am I ready to stand before God? Is God going to accept me into his kingdom? You know, these are questions that a person should never be asking themselves at the time that they die. These are questions that people need to ask themselves right now, because if you're unsure about that, if you're unsure, I'll say, then you really need to get along, okay? You need to get along, and you need to get on your knees, 
I'm about to read. I'm about to read to you guys the gospel. First Corinthians chapter 15, the first four, the first four verses is the gospel. And it reads, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. You hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. He died for everybody's sins. He was nailed to the cross and buried, rose again on the third day, defeating death, taking away the sins of the world. The unblemished Lamb of God, holy and righteous in the sight of God. You see, to go to heaven, we need to be cleaned. We need to be looked at as holy. We need to be looked at in the light. And the only way that we can do that is if we accept the Son of God as our Lord and Savior. In the book of Ephesians, it tells us that salvation is a gift of God, not of works, meaning your 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 good deeds and your moral compass has nothing to do with salvation. Ephesians tells us that it's not of works, but it is a gift from God so that no man should be able to boast. No man should be able to boast. And if we believe on him, if we believe on this work that Jesus did, we shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's it. You never have to ask yourself again, where am I going when I die? You could die today and be confident that you're going to be in heaven with Jesus Christ and God the Father. Don't live your life playing Russian roulette. Don't gamble with your soul, your eternity. See the writing on the wall. And what I mean by that, these events that are happening in Australia right now should be considered a warning to the world. That if this right here can occur in Australia, something similar or even worse can occur in another part of the world. I know there are people in Australia who are turning to Jesus as we speak. But let us who are watching from afar ask the question, is this judgment from God because of their sins? And if it is, I need to repent of my sins because I don't want any part of that. You know, let us pray for Australia that they have their eyes open, that they receive Jesus Christ. Let us pray for them. Let us not just sit to the side and watch, you know, pray for those folks. They need it because the Lord wishes for no man or woman to perish, but to have everyone come to repentance so that they may inherit everlasting life. Okay. God bless you all. Um, I hope that this video gave you something to think about. I know it's a little bit on the longer side, but it's all good. It needed to be said. It needed to be made. And I pray that this message reaches somebody. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Comment down below. Have a blessed evening.